We're back with our friend Dan Milner, where we're discussing some role models for strong photography projects, and we're getting his advice for how to choose what you make a project about. We had a question about some of the projects that, you know, photographers that are known for their sequencing, and I, I just was talking about Ansel Adams over basically his whole lifetime of championing, you know, preservation of our wilderness. And Richard Avedon being a second example of, you know, his uh, in the, you know, his project going through the West and getting that series of portraits. Those are just two off the top of my head. I know, I'm sure you've got a lot of other favorites of, you know, long term project example photographers. I mean, Salgado, yeah, Salgado. Jill Perez, Maggie Steber. Um, BuzzFeed yesterday ran a uh, story about Hannah Kozak in L.A. with her new book, which is called uh, He Threw the Last Punch Too Hard, which is about domestic violence. And wow. that's that book's getting a ton of publicity. She's actually going to be in our second issue of AG23, the zine uh, that's being designed right now. I mean, pretty much every photographer I know is a long-term storyteller that those are the photographers that I'm interested in. I don't typically follow like, you know, still, still life photographers or, you know, but, but here's the thing where I see, a, I'll, I'll just use one, one case study and that's street photography. Um, street photography is a peculiar modern phenomenon to me, right? It's probably in the, in the amateur world of photography, street photography is probably the single hottest genre going. True. Everybody's talking about street photography. Yeah. Very few people in the professional industry are talking about street photography. However, there's a huge difference between saying I'm a street photographer and putting that work out and saying, look at my street photography and you focus on the actual techniques and the cameras and all that junk that doesn't matter, the people who do street photography really well are the ones who are actually telling a story and they happen to be using street photography to tell it. Right. Those, that's the difference between an interesting story and project and a photographer that knows what they're doing and an amateur photographer who, who says, I shoot street and look, I used a Fuji X100 and I did this and that and look yeah. at my pictures. And most of the time they look like a group of random, confusing street photographs, right? There's a million of those people working right now and online. And again, there's nothing wrong with that kind of photography, but I got a, I got a book. I didn't get a physical copy. I got a, 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 sh a short film of someone flipping through a book that sent this to me from South America or Central America a couple of weeks ago. And the person said, look, I'm not a photographer and I'm not a designer, but I did this book and this is what my project is and this is what my story is. And it's about a major city in Central America. And the guy happened, a big percentage of the book happens to be street photography from this city a one particular neighborhood in the city that he's using as a representation for the whole project. And the street photography is really good. It's like the, I mean, it's rare for me to find street photography that I look at and go, this is really good. This was really good. And the first thing the person said to me was, I'm not a photographer and I'm not a designer. And his photographs were outstanding wow. and his book design was outstanding, but he has a secondary career. He has a, he has a primary career that he, operates in on a daily basis that's what doing projects is about yeah. it's about the story itself and there's a you know story is probably one of the most overused words in in the modern creative space right now it's especially in the marketing arena everybody's talking about telling stories and this and that yeah and a story to me when someone says well what's a story or how do i tell a story you know how when you're at a party and let's say that you're at eight you're schmoozing at a cocktail party in the Hollywood Hills, right? You're, you're kind of a B-level B celebrity and you're at this party and you're hanging out and you're trying to act cool and you got a drink in your hand and you're in the con you're talking to somebody you don't know. And the person is telling you something. And halfway through what they're telling you, it makes you think of something. And you start to queue up your response when this person <laughs> stops talking right now you're just waiting for them to stop talking right because you have you have your next thought locked and loaded yeah that's a story that's all it is 
It's just you've got something on your mind and you want to tell someone else. That's, right. That's all it is. Yeah. And, and where I get my story ideas, literature, music, art, I try to reduce a big concept down to a very small atomized idea an atomized either region or person that's representative of the much bigger story. And um, that's how it works. And so I've noticed in the chat that there are a multitude of great questions. Yeah, I want to get into those, but let's let's drill down into this because this is super important. Like, okay, you know, because I have assigned the guys in the AYP plus they're going to come up with a with a project and some of them don't know how to start on that. So you, you I, I'm with you on the inspiration stage of music. You know, the Beatles to me. OK, so maybe this dates me. But the thing about the Beatles was they were constantly looking for uh, not just creating an album with a bunch of songs on it. I mean, that's what they were known for is they had a whole story going on in inside the you know, each one of those songs fit into that story. Sergeant Peppers is the most classic one. And they they made up this whole story about Sergeant Peppers and then they put the songs together. So they had a beginning, middle and end. And I think that was something really new. The Beach Boys were also doing that. So they got they kind of inspired each other. But we can get inspired by music. And as you said, literature. But let's just say, OK, here I am, Dan. I, I got to come up. Mark has given me this assignment. I got to come up with a project. I don't have a friggin' clue. Where do I start? What do I do? Ah, <laughs> Get out my notebook, just start writing out ideas. I mean, what, what's a good way to approach that? Yeah, I'm not opposed to the notebook idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to the idea of asking yourself what you care about what you find interesting. I mean, I've had to do projects that I don't care about when I get assignments yeah. and they send you to go do something or you're photographing someone or something that you're just not into. And that's, that's okay. That's one challenge. But if I was going to take a 13 week class and spend 13 weeks of my life on something, it would be something that I actually cared about. Absolutely. Um, two, two, I would want something with complete and total access Three, I would want something that is very close to where I live so that I do not have to travel great distances. Um, and if that means re-understanding or learning how to see something that I've taken for granted for my whole life. Let's say that I live next to the Mississippi River. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, I've seen the Mississippi my whole life. But maybe I need to, to you know, um, I need to look at it in a different way. I could go look at books on the Mississippi, Alex Soth's book on the Mississippi, for example, Sleeping by the Mississippi. You know, which, by the way, is not my favorite Alex Soap book. I think his Niagara Falls book is my favorite. But that's, you know, you, you I that's where I get inspiration. I This morning I found I learned about a Norwegian poet who wrote a, He grew up in a small village in Norway and he wrote a book of poetry about the end of the Cold War based on being a child working in the fields in Norway. And I, when I found out about him, I was like, oh, my God, I'm, th as soon as I'm off this YouTube live, I'm going to find that book. That's fascinating to me. Um, I also just found out about a book written by a woman in the early 1900s about the very specific location that I have been working on my photo project for the last two years. I had no idea that this woman existed. I had no idea this book existed. And it is literally about the exact place that I'm standing when I'm doing these photographs. And so I would just look for something I love, something that's close, and something I have access to. That is bingo. Right on. You guys, that's, <laughs> there you go. And it's got to be propelled by that passion. Because if you don't have the passion, it ain't going to happen. You're going to run into the first brick wall and not pull yourself off of it and get yourself going again. That's yeah, it's, you know, life's too short. There's a lot of challenging things about our lives. And so you want your photography project to be rewarding, you know, f physically and psychologically rewarding for you. And so if you have a choice, just, you know, take your time and, uh, and find something, you know, just ask yourself, what do I love? What's close? Uh, and what have I had? What have I not done? You know, the idea is, if someone signs up for your class, Mark, 
and and they're you know they have a certain style of project they've done 20 times and they know they can do it and they put it online and people tell them it's good well what's the point of doing that again you know the idea of a class is an, or a workshop is not to walk away with a new portfolio the it's the idea is to learn right. and to take chances and to do things that you haven't done before because then your 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 colleagues in the class and your instructor can say hey you tried this and it worked and you tried this and it didn't work so that's the beauty the beauty of a class or a workshop is that you have permission to fail and that you can really try some new things right on do you guys hear that that's why you should be in the AYP plus class in fact Jared will yeah the plus so I hope you enjoyed today's video be sure to like comment subscribe and enable that bell so you don't miss any of our new videos and as always remember to get out and capture your own images of life.